Hello, I'm Andrew Sim, and welcome back to Aurora 4X. Okay, so time has advanced uh, probably a couple of years since the, the fateful attack happened. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to pick up any of the crew. They all died before any of our nearby ships could get there, which was a little bit sad. But we do have a lot of wrecks to pick up in this system. Um, so, I have just created this fancy ship. Let me find it. Um, the Zack, which is a 30,000 ton salvager that can move at 2 kilometers per second, has a tractor beam, has 10,000 cargo space, and can salvage 500 tons per day. Uh, it can go really long range. The idea is basically we're just going to keep this run around for ages. Probably don't need any more than one, and it's just going to salvage stuff. Um, long range, it's not great in terms of speed, but hey, it can do the job. And it can go around for quite a while. It takes, I think, three years worth of supplies on board? Intended upon that, yeah, like three years. Um, and it can track the beam, so we can use it as a relatively small tug. Uh, in addition, by the way, I have built, uh, well, I have designed, of course, the Yan Yan, which is still being built. Unfortunately, it takes a while to build the Yan Yan. Uh, and the Craig Wright. The Craig Wright is special. The Craig Wright is a terraforming base. It counts as, let me find it here, habitation capacity and orbital habitat. It is an orbital habitat that has on board a grand total of 50 terraforming modules that produce 1, 0.1 atmosphere per annum. We could make a barren planet livable in about three years. It is a giant orbital habitat. Now, because it's an orbital habitat, you build it using construction facilities rather than shipbuilding facilities. It's almost 2 million tons. Yeah, it's big. Uh, and it has... A hundred engines. Let me just find where the engines are. There we go. A hundred engines. And 25 million litres of fuel. Range of 53 billion kilometres. Which takes it two years to get there. It travels at just over a kilometre per second. Now, of course, orbital habitats don't need engines. But I've put them on because I could tug it into position. But it would take a long time and I need a very big tug. I would need a massive tug. Like the tug would need to be gigantic. So, instead I've just gone, ah, screw it. Let's just build it with engines. Um... The engines aren't the main part of this. The main part of this is the 50 terraforming modules and recreational facilities, which means it never needs to go home for more deployment time supplies. Recreational facilities mean that you know people don't ever need to go home. They're fine. Uh, now, of course, because it is a habitat capacity, that means it will work in orbit around anything with people on board the planet. Like, you can't put it into orbit of a gas giant, which is a shame. But you need people on the planet because it's presumed those people also inhabit the space station. But I have given it some fuel harvesters. The idea being that I could get in orbit of a a gas giant and get it to refuel that is because I'm an idiot it wouldn't do that it wouldn't operate so I think we need to just remove those as far as I'm aware to be fair refueling shouldn't be too much of an issue it has a reasonable range like 53 billion kilometers plenty the reason it's got a ridiculous range like that is because fuel tanks don't weigh that much and when we're talking about two billion uh, two million tons fuel tanks really don't weigh that much so I don't care now the build time it says here is 0.93 years I hope that's based on our planet, because if we can build this in under a year, great, because this can go and terraform Io and then send it off to wherever. Just terraform everything. Terraform Mercury. This thing will terraform very, very fast. Very fast. Um, and we should be fine. Of course, it'll drink fuel fairly fast. These uh, engines are not the most efficient. They're the just efficient enough to be commercial. They're not the most efficient. But hey, it'll be worth it. This thing is going to be a beast. Of course, we're not building it quite yet, but we're going to go and have a look at the Zack. So... If we go boop and I believe the Zack is here I would like to split creates a new fleet of center locations currently that contains the ship selecting in the above list there we go the Zack right I would like you to primary can I salvage you've got salvage nearest wreck there we go uh, of course I would like if you've got fuel less than 50% to go refuel and if you've got supplies, less than 20, resupply. Okay, so if we zoom in, Earth is here. The wreck of the Woden and the wreck of the Badger are right next door. Lucky us. All right, let us accelerate by an hour. Okay, how about a day? The Zack is already there, and the Zack is going to spend uh, just under five days. Sure, let's spend five days. Um, salvage of Badger complete, mineral salvaged. So we salvage the Badger class first. 
Then we're going to be doing the Woden. Excellent. How long do you need? You haven't told me? Okay, let's spend five minutes. Time required. 13 days. Um, mineral shortage on Earth. I have tried to switch overload of mines to uh, uh, Mars, but the issue actually we're having with Mars at the moment, if we just segue slightly. Oh, you're up here. Hello. Oh, by the way, the Zack was built at commercial CJ Dojo Inc. Uh, one of the many shipyards that we had built by accident we're actually now using. I'm also getting these two up to uh, speed. So I'm getting them nice and big and fat, extra slipways and all that jazz. The dojo is being built at our smaller one, which I believe is adding extra slipway. Yes, you are. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, if we go have a look at Mars mining, you'll notice that we're actually stockpiling resources. We can't get them off quick enough. So what I've done is I've sent a demand for some mass drivers, demand for mines, etc. And Earth should be supplying those. Problem is, doesn't look like anyone's actually taking up the contract. I don't know why. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but hey. Uh, Luna. We need to fix you at some point, Luna. But for now, yeah, I don't care. Uh, right. Let's go another five days. Yeah, another day. Another day. Another day. And another 12 hours. So, eight, three, one, one. Ooh. Okay, so we got 640 research points for the magazine, magazine ejection system. Um, salvage of Woden completed. We got some materials. Three size three missile, missile launchers salvaged from the class, uh, wreck of the Woden class. And loading cargo holds. Okay. One electronic countermeasures. One electronic countermeasure countermeasures. Counter countermeasures. One missile fire control system. One EM detection sensor. One thermal sensor. Uh, and we've got more research points for ejection system. Uh, evidence of their magazine ejection system was found. Okay, that's fine. Um, honestly, Zach, I want you to dump them at home before you move. SV, Zach. Salvage wreck. Remove all. Earth. Go back. Move to. Refuel. Uh, unload all ship components. Unload ship. Can I unload all ship components? Unload all installations, all minerals. Uh, unload all minerals. And then I guess we'll unload ship component. That was a good amount of stuff to find. Now hopefully we can disassemble that and get something useful out of it. So, give your day. And the Zack is now on station somewhere else, which I think means we should have stuff at Earth. Earth, hello. Um, industry. Stockpiles. ECM-3. If we disassemble that... Find out about the background technology. Cargo handling system, we have. So... Do you still have it on board? Did you drop it off yet? Maybe you just didn't drop it off. Oh, you're still dropping stuff off. That's the time required to drop stuff off. Three hours. There we go. Um, promotions and stuff. Mineral shortage. Civilian mining colonies expanded. I don't really mind. I'm a little bit focused right now on some new interesting technology. Stockpiles. ECCM. Okay, so the ECM was right, but it's, it's taking time to drop everything off. I don't think it has a cargo handling system, which is uh, a mistake. I probably should have built a cargo handling system into it, but oh well. Let's disassemble. I don't think we found out. There's a chance every time we disassemble that we get a uh, chance of finding out about the background tech. So I'm going to give you five days. And you're now moving to salvage a new wreck, which means we should have detection uh, sensor. Missile fire control. Missile launcher. Thermal sensor. I don't think we found out about anything. I think it would have told us. Oh, well. There's only a small chance, I understand. But fine. We're nearly out of Durantium. Less than a year left, really. We're still not shipping any of this. I don't know why this hasn't been shipped. 
I'm honestly really confused about why people aren't shipping this stuff. We've got demands, we've got infrastructure, but the civilian ships just aren't doing their jobs. I know they're doing like a lot of colonists and stuff, but they do have freighters in the area. Hmm. More colony ships being launched. Uh, why? Why are you not doing these? There are freighters right here. Like, these are freighters, right? Why are they not... Supply? Supply? Mars? Demand? Demand? Yeah. Just isn't doing it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to cancel the demand for the mass driver. Earth. Cancel the supply for the mass driver, and I'm gonna have to do it myself. The issue with that is, um, I got the badger and I actually consolidated the fleet. And I can't do this with mass drivers because that means everyone will grab mass driver, Earth won't have any left. Earth would actually have one left, but the point is that I need to actually have half of these doing the job. So I need to select um, the badger and the Lucia Wind, and I would like to split task group, Earth. Load mass driver. Uh, go to Mars. Unload mass driver. Earth. And refuel resupply. And then you might as well just join up with the badger. So task groups. Badger, 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 marshal, marshal. Right, join. There we go. Right, completed orders. And then we'll get you to do more mines. Because right now we could do shipping some more mines over. Because right now we do not have the Durantium. So, uh, load mine. Mars. Unload mine. Earth. Refuel. Colony resupply. Uh, yeah. And then repeat that 24 times. So you should be able to get 100 mines because there's four of you. Evidence of ceramic composite armor. So they're using the same armor as us. Um, fire control, active search sensor, thermal sensor, magnetic fusion drive. Oh, I really hope we can disassemble that. Zack. Once you've done salvaging that wreck, pop back to Earth, get a uh, refuel, a resupply, and also unload ship component. And then get back to whatever you're doing. Excellent. And we've expanded some of our... Uh... Ship tasks. Manage, 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 manage. Right, you're up to 60,000 tons with four slipways. That's probably fine. You need an extra slipway. Now you're at 60,000 tons. I want a nice range. And we are building more Spirit of Craig in Gracelands. This is our second batch. So we've got another batch in orbit. I want probably at least three of these before we can even consider going back to them. At least three. Um... Yanyans are still being built. Those should be our jump gate ships. Derkun. You're going to be another one of our scouty ships. I'm not using them at the moment because, of course, we're a little bit afraid of going anywhere. We probably should start checking out some of the nearby star systems, in fact. To be fair, just one enemy race shouldn't mean that we retreat forever. Yeah, let's do it. GSV Riv. I would like you to jump through jump point two. Standard transit. And Derkun, I would like to jump through jump point four, standard transit. So we added to CJ Dojo. Sweet. CJ Dojo, you're up to three. That's pretty fun, I'll leave it at that for the moment. 
And I think we also have enough Durantum coming in. The Earth's not complaining anymore because Mars can ship enough now. Riv cannot carry standard transit order as at least one ship is large in the ship with the highest jump rating. Riv. Ah, do you have a jump drive? You must do, because we were... Oh no, we weren't exploring with you, were we? Wow. We should probably update you at some point. Yeah, we need to add a jump drive to you. Like, you're fine, but at 10,000 tons, you're not really going to do us any favors. Sorry about that, Riv. I forgot what you were. Um, just go back to Earth. Uh, Earth. Move to. And we'll refit you at some point, in fact. I'll let you have a jump drive. Yeah, let's do it right now. Riv. I'm going to copy the design. Uh, rename. Riv. Mark 2. Design view. New armor. So right composite now. Uh, which saved us almost a thousand tons. What have we got? Get rid of a couple of these engines. Get some better engines on. There we go. Nice and fast. Um, we also want a jump drive. So you're probably going to end up a bit over 10,000 tons, mate. I'm sorry about that one. Um... Do we have applicable jump drive? We have a military jump drive for 20,000 tons. We'll take it. It's it's overkill. But I don't want to have to research a new jump drive. So there we go. Uh, puts you up to there. Let's give you just a crap ton of uh, propulsion sensors. Why not? So get you up to about 6,000 kilometers per second. And then... Oh, God, no, you're way too big now. Oh, well. Four and a half is fine. And can we get extra sensors on with that? Twenty thousand tons, four thousand kilometers per second, four hundred billion kilometers. That is plenty far enough. Um, ooh, the mate's life is not good enough. I'll have to remove something. Probably get rid of one of the fuel stores. To be fair, two hundred billion kilometers is still fine. Um, and what can we add to deal with the fact you are probably going to break apart and die? Maintenance storage bay or engineering spaces? Engineering spaces. Four years. I think you're intended for uh, six years, isn't it? We're going to shoot over our weight limit. I was going to go for 20,000 tons because that's what our military shipyards can manage. Maybe if I add another engineering space. And get up to five years. So let's just switch this to five years and we should bring it ourselves in under the wire. There we go. Yeah, we can go for five years, 4,000 kilometers per second, a range of 200 billion kilometers. Um, yeah, the Rift Mark II is uh, twice the tonnage, but I think reasonable, especially since the jump drive is uh, a little bit overkill. We just decided to go screw it and put everything in, but why not? Um, with that last bit of weight, I can get a little bit more fuel, which I might as well do. How long will it take you to... It'll take two, two years to use all that fuel, though. And you won't be moving for two years. That's fine. We're going to leave it as it is. Don't need to have any more fuel. There we go. Right. This is Galize. Pretty small solar system. Pretty big planet over there. With a... A couple of intraplanet, uh, interplanetary jump points, uh, intersystem jump points, LP1 and LP2. Basically means you can jump between them. 
which is useful. Let's have a quick look at the solar system. Terrestrial planet. That is almost livable? What the hell? This could be inhabited. What's the temperature? Minus 40. If we get the temperature up, we can live on this planet. I'm adding a colony straight away. It won't take much to make this livable. That is a... Terrestrial planet with a surface temperature of 1300 degrees. Yeah. Oh, and a pressure of... Oh, it's got a lot of carbon dioxide. To be honest, a lot of that probably comes from the uh, greenhouse effect. Um, you're a dwarf planet. You could be livable. Okay, you know. I like this place. Deccan. I really hope you find out what the hell's going on in this system, because if it's inhabited, I will be mad. Oh, have you finished your orders, Deccan? Yeah, you don't have any orders, right? I would like you to explore geological survey and then do your normal geological surveys. Nearest five survey, uh, nearest no, sorry, nearest five system bodies. There we go. And the rivs completed its orders. Unfortunately, I don't know if we've got any way that can rebuild the riv because currently we're focusing on building the Graceland and Spirit of Craig. We'll have to use you, but you're not going to be ready for another seven years. So the river's just not going to get a look in. So we're not going to be expanding beyond the border systems for six years. We know that straight up. It's understandable in our position. Earth, how's your industry doing? Still doing construction. It's going to take you a while. Uh, I think we'll switch over to building ourselves a orbital habitat. The Craig Wright should be a terraforming base, so I think it's just orbital habitat here, and then it goes into play, say, TBF or something, or TB... No, TFB, sorry, terraforming base, yeah. So let's create that. Bring you down. Bring you up. Yeah, you'll be done by October next year. That's worth it. I just hope it's not inhabited. Like, it could well be inhabited. Ruined outpost found on Gliese. <gasps> what did we find? We found a little bit of Durantium, a little bit of Neutronium, a little bit of Corbium. Oh, this is so worth it. A little bit of everything. On a ruined outpost. From an old alien civilization, but no one's there now. Oh, but look at the resources. Like, there's only a little bit, but there's so much of it. We're going there. We're going there. We're going to explore those ruined outposts, etc. This, this looks amazing. It's also got an ice sheet. Oh, it's actually a water world. Look at that. 100% coverage of ice sheets. They're going to melt. We're going to have 100% ocean. It's fine. We'll just live under the sea. I think we need to name this planet. It's such a good find. Let me who see. Who is in the next one? Uh, I believe next on the list for the design is Duranku. So, if I rename body, Duranku, and I'm going to leave that in brackets. Such a good find. It's so easy to live in this place. We just dump some carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we're ready to go. The, 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 the atmospheric pressure is higher than we used to, but we can go up to four times. So, the gravity is higher than we used to. But we can go up to twice our normal gravity. Yeah, 1.9 is max. Yeah, this place is amazing. I I really like it. This is really cool. Like, this place is basically like Antarctica. Like, you can live in it. It's just really, really cold. Just make sure you, you know, wear the right clothes and get inside. Oh, it's such a good find. Okay, so what I think I'll do is I'll probably end the episode here. We'll do a quick survey of the system. Um, we're probably going to start mining 
things in the system as soon as possible. We'll send off our terraforming base, which I was going to send to Io. I'm almost tempted just to send it over here. Let's look at Io. What have you got? Mines, 120. So you do have mines already working there. What's your environment looking like? We're still pumping carbon dioxide in. Trying to get the pressure, the surface temperature up. We've only got 5 degrees so far. Yeah, I think we'll just send our terraforming base in here. But that requires us to have the jump gate ships having built jump gates. And I don't know how long till they're ready. In fact, if we have a quick look at them. Yan Yan's going to be busy, uh, ready August, September. Yeah, we should actually have the jump gates built in time for the terraforming base to come through. Two million tons of it traveling to an unknown system. 50,000 people. Oh, this is so good. Okay, um... I do wonder if anyone's still done those civilian jobs that I told them to. Supply mines, they just haven't. They're just not doing them. I don't know why. I really don't understand it. I mean, they have got... Freighters, right? I'm not just making this up. I'm not just imagining it. Yeah, freighters right here. They're just not doing anything. They are literally stationary at Earth. And I'm not sure why. There's a huge one. There's a large one. There's small ones. They're just not doing anything. Yeah, you've got a freighter. You've got freighters. Recent delivery colonists. Colonists. Yeah, you see the recent deliveries are all colonists. They're not actually moving any goods. Wow, you move a quarter of a million colonists at a time. It's impressive. Okay. Well, I think we'll call it here for this episode. Um... Earth can shoot. Ooh. Nice. I didn't know Earth had such a large range. I like it. Uh, but yeah, I've been Andrew Um If you've liked, uh, please remember to like, not subscribe. Please consider subscribing. Next time, we're going to move to uh, take advantage of our new system. I might just start the ball rolling off camera. Um, come back to it later because there is going to be a lot of building and figuring out why the hell people aren't doing stuff. I don't want to have to build cargo ships again. I quite like the civilians doing the jobs that they were meant to be doing, but they just don't seem to want to do them. Which is incredibly frustrating. I don't know why civilians aren't doing anything. Because it's so easy. Like, I really love using the civilian system. It means I don't have to micromanage. It means I just be like, oh, do this. And they do it. But uh, I'll have a look on the wiki or something. But anyway, um, if you enjoyed, do the jazz. You know about it. And we'll get our revenge on the Barnard Star Aliens as soon as we have ourselves a large enough military force. Um... We do need to improve our tech to take advantage of uh, the situation. That's a quick look. Dissemble? No. Um, active search sensor? No. Magnetic fusion drive? <sighs> Worth a try. Let's check research. Fusion stuff. Uh... Where would it be? Power portion. No, none of those have been started, so yeah, it just didn't do anything. Which is a shame. Uh, I have people working on a number of techs, including two-stage thermonuclear warhead, better terraforming rate, engine uh, power, which basically this is going to make for good missiles. Uh, fire control speed rating, that's to be able to get some CWIS systems in. Uh, CIWS, close-in weapon systems, which are anti-missile. They're like anti-missile the last line defense before anti-missile missiles. Like any of those missiles have like several million kilometer range. but And I think I figured out why they didn't work before, by the way. Um, it takes five seconds to fire. By the time we detect their missile, the next time we did a five second jump, they'd already hit us. Which is why our system was ineffective. So we do need to redesign that, but the problem is I don't have time to redesign and retool. So we're going to have to send our guys out without any anti-missile systems. Not that our anti-missile systems would be able to hit those missiles particularly effectively, because they travel so damn fast. We could put SeaWiz systems on them, but our SeaWiz system technology isn't up to scratch. So we're just going to have to tank the hits at the moment and just <laughs> use sheer numbers. I know, it's... Not the most elegant solution, but it's all we got. It is all we got. We are more numerous. Well, then they killed our entire military. 
Uh, but we did seem to have a lot more going on in system. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get this going. And hopefully, we'll be able to crack out a new system next turn. And I'm going to have a look why these civilians aren't doing anything. Because it's not these civilians. Anyway, until next time, stay shiny.